Hello everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how we go about saving information into the uh, entity that we just created in the previous video. All right. So just to review what we've done last time, we went to the core data model and we created an entity called store. In this entity we have some attributes, we don't have any relationships. And then we did what? We generated, we did an editor, we went to the uh, editor and we generated the class. So we got a class called store.swift. Now if you look at the attribute for this, uh, you could look at the property for this uh, entity, you'll notice that you have, here you click on this and then you got the attribu uh, attributes. Uh, what you have right now, it used to be like this. Okay, so you have the store, the class that represents this entity in your model. But there's a, uh, you might run into a problem. So to avoid confusion, because if you have multiple models, what you do is that you actually qualify this name by the model name. And the model name is here. So if you click here and you do command copy here, go to this class, and then command V, and put dot. All right, hit enter. So now, the class we're referring to is defined in this model. All right, so this is the first step we need to do. The next thing I'm going to do, I've already created this just to avoid to save time and uh, for the sake of this video because it'll be long. I've created in the main storyboard, I've created uh, in the view controller that we have, I've created a few fields. All these fields are text fields, and then the image is binary data, but for now, I'm just gonna stick to it as a, we're not gonna mess with the image, and then maybe hopefully the next video, I'll show you how we store images into your code data. So now, if you look at the class that we have, I have few outlets related to those objects, this, 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 you have all these outlets to them, okay? In addition to this, I have a save button, which is connected to an IB actions, and I'll explain what we've done in here. And then I have a keyboard, when it clicks, if you touch anywhere on the UI view, we made this, you know, we've used a technique that we've used before, I made the UI view as a controller, UI control, and then you touch anywhere, we call this method hide keyboard, and then I'll explain this piece in a minute. All right. So let's go to let's go to the UI view controller. In the UI view controller, remember there are steps. When I was explaining the uh, I was explaining the uh, presentation in the power of the core data and the PowerPoint presentation. First, you need to include your core data into the class. So the first part you do import core data. The next part is you get access to the managed object in your class, in the app delegate, in the app delegate, okay? So what we've done here, I have in the app delegate, in the, in the app delegate, what I have done here, I got access to the app delegate, and this will give you access to the app delegate, UI application, shared application, dot delegate as an app delegate. So this will give you the app delegate. And then remember there was an object or a variable in the app delegate called manage object context. So I got, now this will give me the manage object context. So anywhere in my application, you can use the manage object context by getting it from the app delegate. So this is important. And I'm defining it as, uh, uh, the variable name that we use is manage object context. You could name it anything you want. Okay, so that's the second step after we do what? The import code data. Third, in the save data, this is the action, IB action method that we function that we tie to the save button. What you do next is that you get, get the description of your entity. Okay, in this case, we say store description, my variable, and as entity description, entity name, and this is what, this is your uh, description, this is the, the entity name that we defined in the model. Remember when we said store, that's the name I use. 
And where do I, what do I use? I, t I ask the managed object context to give me that information, okay? Because it's defined in the, uh, the managed object context, keep track of all of this. All right, so I got the description. Okay, so this is how we do, we get the description. The next part is you do what? You get, you create the managed object itself. This is very similar to creating object in uh, pre previously, you know, you could say store or whatever, you're just creating a simple object. But this is a managed object. You use the description, which we just did here, and then again, you use the managed object to create, the managed object context to tell it that this is the store that we're gonna create and it is it, the managed object context will keep track of the status of that store. So this is just regular class object with attributes. The next piece is that you want you set the attributes for the object we just created. So I have in that object I have as name, description, latitude, and longitude, and I get those from where the what the whatever the user entered. All right, and after you set the attributes, you want to do something with the data, you want to save it. And when you save the data, you can have two possibilities. One, it's successful, and one, it, is, it has failed. In either case, you want to tell the, the uh, user that you've either successfully saved the data or there is an error saving the data. So what do you do? We define an error object variable and the type of this is ns error we use the context the save to save the context status because we change the attribute we change this object now when we say this it will save the context the save this information into the sqr light if you will the underlying uh, database and the outcome of this either failed or success and the, the information will be sent to me in the error. If there was an error, that means it's not nil, the error object is not nil, you will get what you will say, if error equal to error, that means there is actually an error, it's not nil, we display this message. And to get to the text of this error, we use error.localized failure reason. So this is, will give you the error message that you got from the, the from the uh, from the error object. So if if it was if you have an error, you create an alert view and you display it. Now you could have put this in a label on your for UI view, whatever. But I I did this to show you. You can use it with an alert view. Else that means that there's no, if the this is equal to nil, then we actually display a message that everything is successful. Now you can. We could have done here, you can actually clear all the fields, okay? So you can just say txt uh, name.txt if you want, and then um, you can say, you know, equal to blank, and then that we clear the fields after it was successful, okay? I'm not gonna do that because for a reason, okay? So now this is what you do for saving the data, okay? This steps again, Get the description first. Before we do that, you get the con manage object context. Get the description of your entity. Create the object, the store, the, the object that you the manage object, manage object, the store. Set the attributes. Issue the command to save it and monitor for error or success. And that's it. Okay. The last part in this code I was going to show you here. I have the hide keyboard because I have multiple screens i have multiple fields on my screen i don't know where my cursor is so i resign i need to resign the response responder for all first responder for all the text fields so what you could do is you can say if you you loop through your views in your form so you can say for v in view sub view and then you check is if it, is it a text field ui text field if the the view is a ui text field now what do you do? You just say uh, uh, resign first responder, okay? All right, and uh, that is it. All right, now to test it, let's go ahead and run it. 
you just type in, for example, store one a for example space a and you say amazing great store whatever you want to call it. store and then you can look latitude here one one I don't know just any numbers for now those are meaningful meaningless right now later on we will make them meaningful okay and um, Okay, now notice if I click here anywhere, it should hide the keyboard, right? So it hide the keyboard. Whether you're here, you hide the keyboard. Here, you hide the keyboard. Okay, and then I click on save. So the record is saved. Now that record is in your device data, okay, storage. So now next time you want to, you open your app, it's there. Now what you can do, and let's just create a few more, B, and Okay, great. We'll just leave it the same for sake of testing. Click on save. I got two. And now we got three. Now this. So I got three. Okay. That is it. All right. I didn't type the code. I think this is, uh, I mean, you can always pause the screen and look, type in the code. But these are the steps that you need to do in order to save data into your uh, core data. The next video, what I'm going to show you, how we list those data that we just saved into the database, how do we list them in a table view?